welcome, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Henry VIII, King of England. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, uh, where are you from? I'm the King of England, actually. And my story of getting to the throne is pretty interesting. Um, so, I wasn't the next in line until my brother Arthur died when he was 15. And when my dad, Henry VII, died, I uh, inherited the throne at the age of 17. And thankfully, it was a pretty peaceful time in England because my father had just finished the Wars of Roses, which was a war between families to try to take over the throne of England. Nice. So, uh, what are your long-term and short-term effects of your rule? Well, what I'm mostly known for is the English Reformation, which is the splitting of the church. And so basically what happened was I wanted to divorce my wife, Catherine of Aragon, because that marriage was cursed, clearly. And my request was denied due to Catherine's nephew, Roman Emperor Charles V, and his influence that he had with the Pope. And so I got support from the English Parliament and the clergy, and we decided we didn't need to, you know, team up with the Pope. You know, we didn't need them. And the Pope wanted to excommunicate me, which is totally ridiculous. And so then, originally, I just wanted a, a Catholic Church that was loyal to myself in England, but I cl quickly realized that was not going to work, so I broke from Rome and began to institute some Protestant things and English things, such as English Bibles in all of the churches. And then I declared myself the supreme head of the Church of England. Which is really, really important. And I also supported the Protestant learning Archbishop of Canterbury, because I felt like he would really express, you know, what I wanted in the church. And then, so we divided, and I named myself the head of the Church of England. And then, after I died, unfortunately, Mary I returned England to uh, Catholicism for a brief period of time. But thankfully, Elizabeth I returned England on a Protestant path for the future. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, uh, what are some uh, interesting facts about you? Well, okay, so the most interesting fact about me is I actually had six wives. Um, two of them I actually killed, but, you know, I get a lot of heat for that, but actually... You know, they weren't birthing me sons, so... I feel like that was kind of their fault. Um, I just don't understand all that, you know, all that about that. Beautiful girl, that's why it'll never work. You had me suicidal, suicidal, and you say it's over, damn all these enforce your rule? Well, you see, I take two approaches, really. Uh, one's through enforcement, like I would execute people who I felt, you know, were committing treason or were a potential threat to my throne. Um, so, for example, Thomas Wosley, I accused him of treason, even though he didn't do it. Uh, you know, executed him, this sent a message to the Pope and all of England that I, I had total control, and no one really wanted to challenge my, you know, rule. Uh, there's also the Pilgrimage of Grace, which was a ton of, you know, people that didn't agree with me, which is ridiculous, first of all. So I, uh, I executed 200 of them. You know, especially the ruler. I just felt like he, he had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. Uh, John Fisher and Sir Thomas More. They, uh, so Sir John Fisher is the Bishop of Rochester, and Sir Thomas More is my former Lord Chancellor. And uh, I beheaded them at Tower Hill because they did not take an oath to the king. Me, which is pretty ridiculous. And so, and I also took an approach to the religion aspect. Uh, I named myself the supreme head of the Church of England, so all of my religious followers or people that follow the church would see that I have the divine right to rule and would not challenge me based off the fact that I support the Church of England and their, their Protestant religion. Woo! Welcome, Hello. welcome. Okay, I'm Catherine the Great, Tsarina of um, Russia, and I'm also known as Catherine the Second. So, uh, how did you establish rule? Um, well, I overthrew my husband Peter III with a coup in six months. She got a road that's why I love her. Peace in the then I ruled Russia for over three decades. Overall, Russia was not happy with my husband as he took away land from the Orthodox Church and, get, and, at, and to add, he was quite childish. That being said, I might have gone behind his back with Greg Olva. Our lob. Together we built enough support, well actually national support, to overthrow Peter. How did you enforce rule? After I overthrew my husband, I did agree that an exclusive ruler was the best fit for Russia at the time. Um, I developed my own legal 
code, which was called the Nakaz. It included reforms relating to banning torture to everyone being equal. After this was passed, I soon developed a committee that would allow Russians to express their needs and problems within our country. Although no laws were passed during my reign, it was a step forward for Russia. Additionally, at the time, Europe saw my country as unstable, and I worked hard to try and change that negative view. As my husband and I did extend the influence of the West, I think people these days call it westernization. To do this, I set forth educational re reforms and expanded our borders through military might. What is one thing that defines you? Um, although I was a uh, czarina of uh, Russia, I am not Russian. I'm actually Prussian. And to add, my birth name is not Catherine, it's Sophie. When I was 15 years old, I was invited to Russia through Peter the Great's daughter, Elizabeth. She chose me to marry her nephew, Peter, as she did not have an heir to her throne. Uh, what are long and short-term effects of your rule? Um, I I'm highly criticized in Russia for not improving the lives of serfs and for cheating on my husband. But due to my involvement with educational ref reforms and art movements, I think that I was a pretty good ruler, at least better than my husband. Also, the land grew immensely during my reign. I conquered land, including Lithuania and Belarus. Also, to carry on my legacy, my son, Paul, took the throne. Wow, that's pretty cool. Welcome, Woo! welcome. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm Louis the 14th. So, uh, how did you uh, come to power? Um, when I was four years old, I inherited the crown in a time where France is unstable politically and economically. I saw myself as a direct representative, representative of God, and using this, I used the divine right to overall establish my rule. The divine right allowed me to rule without a chief minister. How did you enforce your rule? Me and my wife, Anne of Austria, established various rules and policies to tighten the reign of France. This tight enforcement caused the nobles to get angry and later led to a civil war known as the Fronde. The Edict of Nantes protected the Huguenots' ability to freely practice their religion. When the Huguenots left because of the loss of this right, I was left with a France that had lost its nobility and educated people. I initially tried to establish economic unity, however, it ended up the other way around. Luckily, with the colonies and mercantilism, I was able to keep our, our country afloat, economy afloat. The loss of the Huguenots later affected our country in the fact that we have lost a broad aspect of our religious values because we discriminated against a specific group. What is one thing that defines you? I have really, really nice built calves. That <laughs> and I also have really cool hair. I also call myself the Sun King because I chose the sun as my symbol. childhood I did ballet where my character represented the sun and I was often compared to the sun god Apollo. What are the long and short term effects of your rule? Overall I think I created a stable country politically and economically in the short term by encouraging manufacturing to overall uplift the government. I also introduced France into the golden age of art and literature. I spent maybe a little too much money on unnecessary things eventually leading my country into debt. To be a billionaire, so freaking bad. Buy all of the things I never had. Hey guys. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Justinian, and we're Justinian the Great. Alright, how did you establish rule? Uh, I established rule by creating my own legal code called Justinian's Code, where I took codes or legal laws from previous uh, rulers, such as Hammurabi's Code, and I implemented all the ideas that I wanted and created an own set of laws that uh, benefited me in every way possible. Nice, nice. So, how did you enforce that rule? Uh, I enforced that rule with a bureaucratic system where I had governors that went around and enforced this rule. And I also, uh, if people came out of line, such as during the Nika riots, when people started writing against me, my wife told me that I had to do something. So I went and put them all in the hippodrome and killed all 30,000 of them. I need to apologize. <laughs> it's too late. I said it's too late to apologize. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> so, uh, what's one fun fact about you? One fun fact about me is that, uh, my wife was a, uh, female entertainer, um, and that 
I never slept after she died. She died 20 years before I did, and I barely slept after that, so that's why they called me the uh, the ruler that never stops working. So wide awake, I want to stay up all night and jump around until we see the sun. I want to stay up all night. Okay, um, so what are the long and short-term effects of your rule? Well, Justinian's code, which was one thing that I implemented during my rule, uh, went on to affect many different law codes throughout uh, the rest of history. Uh, it's even seen in our U.S. Constitution. Uh, it's implemented in many different laws um, and the different kinds of punishments that you have through these laws. Cool, cool. I was also so dedicated to Christianity that, <laughs> that I created a giant church called the Hagia Sophia, which you may know. Uh, it still stands today in Istanbul, but it, sadly it has been converted to a mosque. Okay. God's plan. God's plan.